This player was an undersized power hitter out of the Onion Patch Club in Ottawa in the 70s. Known for his dedication and hard work and respect for the game, he would go on to an eight-year pro professional career in Japan, France, and Italy. Named to Team Canada in 1978, he would represent the nation until 85, competing in competitions worldwide and lending them, uh, leading them as, a, as the captain at the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. The fourth place finish is the highest finish of any Canadian team to date. He would follow his playing career with another 10 years as a player agent, helping the next generation further their careers. We would like to welcome Paul Graton to the stage as part of the OVA Hall of Fame class of 2021. Well, thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor. It's really a privilege also to be among all of you. Uh, I would like to thank the OVA. I would like to, uh, to thank Really, when, when we were driving here from Ottawa, I was discussing with my wife, and I said, of course, I feel very proud of, of uh, for receiving this award, but what I feel mostly is gratitude. And I know I only have a short time, but there's so many people I need to, to thank. I don't know how I can squeeze that in into a, a two-minute talk, but from players and coaches that have motivated me, that, that have mentored me, uh, Motiv uh, motivating me, yes, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm so lucky to have met so many people like that, managers and, uh, and trainers also that have guided me throughout my career, that gave me a life that uh, I could not dream of when I first, you know, stepped on a volleyball club with Onion Patch. Um, by the way, I'm not responsible for that name. <laughs> Before Onion Patch, it was Rolly's menswear. And God knows where that came from. So thank you very much for the, uh, the OVA, for not only for this award, but for all the work that you do around, around Ontario. Um, you are really a world-class uh, organization with all your programs, the way you develop athletes, uh, the way you train them and promote the sport in all of our communities. I think that is, that is so special. And uh, lastly, of course, I can't forget my wife that has been in this journey with me for so long and supported me uh, through the 20 years or so that I've played. Thank you, and uh, well, thank you very much. Everybody. A Varsity Blues members for five seasons, she would help the team to three Ontario championships and a place in the first ever Women's Canadian Intercollegiate Athletic Union Volleyball Championships in 1971. Say that 10 times fast. At the provincial level, she would be a part of Team Ontario's first national title at the 1967 Canada Winter Games, a team that was later inducted into the OVA Hall of Fame in 2018. From there, she would get the call to Team Canada, where she would wear the maple leaf for four years, participating in the 1971 Pan American Games, World Cup events, and the first volleyball tour of China and Japan by a Western nation. She would jump into the coaching ranks with the Blues from 1975 to 1988, leading Team Ontario women at the 1979 Canada Games in Brandon, Manitoba, and become one of the first women to coach elite men's competitions, where she led Team Ontario men. Please join me in welcoming Julie Andrucci to the stage as an OVA Hall of Fame member in the class of 2021. Thank you very much. This is really, I really appreciate uh, this acknowledgement and I think that uh, the OVA has done an extremely good job and many people aren't aware of what they were doing in the 70s. Anton Ferlani in particular um, was really instrumental in, in uh, getting the OVA running and involving as many communities as he could. The Ukrainians, the Latvians, the Estonians um, all had teams and at that time you didn't need a full club system. You could have one team, and that team could participate in the OVA. And his uh, Spiker magazine, which some of you may be aware of, um, came out quarterly, I think, and it was really, really informative. And it brought the volleyball community together. Um, and um, I would like to say that the <laughs> Ukrainian youth team that I, um, that I joined 
as a junior, we, some years, a couple of years, we won the Ontario juniors and we won the Ontario seniors. And at that time, we were really lucky because the OVA paid the full fare to the nationals. So we got to some years, we got to go to both. And I know things have changed. However, it's a much broader organization and times have changed. But I'm really grateful. Thank you very much. A talented player out of High Park in Toronto, he competed with the Ukrainian Youth Association, winning the 1970 Ontario Championship and with Parktail Institute, where he won two OFSA gold medals in 1969 and 71. He was named to Team Ontario for the Canada Winter Games in Saskatoon in 71, bringing home the silver medal. He would join Team Canada in 1973 for Norseca Championships in Tijuana, Mexico, where the team would win Canada's first medal, a bronze, in the competition. He would stay with Team Canada until 1975, when he would return to the Ukrainian Sports Association, where as part of their men's open team, he would win multiple Ontario senior titles and a Canadian national title. He would go on to join the International Volleyball League for six seasons, playing with teams in LA, Albuquerque, Tucson, and Santa Barbara, winning two league titles and making three all-star appearances. Please welcome to the stage Peter Stefaniuk as a 2021 OVA Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you very much. Uh, I too am humbled by this um, nomination and induction into the Ontario Volleyball Hall of Fame. Um, when I first heard, I was, a smile went from ear to ear, and I said, wow, all those years uh, have been acknowledged, and I, and I feel grateful. I'd like to thank all of the athletes and coaches who influenced me throughout my career, and uh, uh, tell you as well that um, our 1975 national championship team went undefeated for the first time in Ontario, and, and then went, ended up winning national championships. Uh, unfortunately, many of my teammates couldn't make it here tonight, so I'm the only one. But uh, as well, I was lucky enough to play for Canada and um, winning Canada's first ever uh, medal in an Olympic qualifier event. And at the same time, um, I'd like to thank my sister, Helena, who's here. Um, she pushed me into this game. She encouraged me. And she and I were the brother and sister that played for Canada together. Excuse my emotion. And uh, I'm grateful to her, so thank you so much. Um, then the, I was lucky enough to get chosen to play in the Hollywood Volleyball League out in California and got to meet a lot of different people, movie stars, actors, musicians, and uh, really enjoyed my time there, but it was totally different. It wasn't really volleyball, it was co-ed volleyball. And we had two women on the court with four guys, and, uh, and it was fantastic. The girls were from Peru, from Germany, uh, from, um, from Mexico, as well as Canada and across the United States, and we had a great time. And I truly believe that this was probably one of the best times to grow up in volleyball. However, I have to congratulate the OVA. When we played, there was junior, there was senior. There weren't age groups. And the OVA has developed to such a, uh, a distinction in, in developing the sport of volleyball that they deserve a lot of credit. And I thank you so much. Thank you all. This man is a legend in the Durham region and across the OCAA. Over 24 seasons with Durham College Women's Program, his teams would set a Canadian College Athletic Association women's record with 357 wins under one coach. From 1984 to 2007, the team would never miss the Ontario playoffs, earning 10 medals and winning four provincial titles. Someone confirm for me if that's five provincial titles. A seven-time OCAA Coach of the Year and the 1994 CCAA Coaching Excellence Award winner, the OVA Hall of Fame inductee in the coaching category for 2021 is Stan Marchett. Unfortunately, Stan passed away in 2012 before his call to the Hall of Fame, but here to accept his honor is his son, Michael Marchett. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to have to talk, so <laughs> I guess I'll try to think about what my dad would say. Um, he would say, obviously, it's an honor, but 
he would say he didn't deserve it. Uh, he'd say it was the players that made him look good. Um, but he's not here, so I'll just say it. He was amazing. He was my coach, and I'm sure anyone else that had the privilege of playing for him would agree that uh, he was a pretty awesome man and coach. So this is greatly appreciated, and uh, I'm sure he would feel the same way. Thanks.